you you touched on producing. How did that bug catch you? Because I used to sit in the studio with Chud and with Avo, some of the big shots to Avo, mm-hmm. you know, some of the other cats that used to come to the studio and do their thing. And it was like, man, that, I love that. I love, <laughs> I mean, that you taking a whole, you putting it in your hand. You take, now you're taking control of something. Okay. So it was like, not only because, and, and this was always the thing, and it was always funny, and we used to laugh because you'll play a track for somebody, oh, I don't really like that. Okay. Okay, here go the next, oh, I don't really like that. Yeah. Well, make your own damn beat thing. <laughs> I mean, I never did that because anything, any track that was presented to me, uh-huh. I either rapped on it or said I couldn't put something to it. Mm-hmm. Like, I wasn't the fast, the, the tongue twisting, crucial conflict, do or die type rapper. Okay. I was more the laid back, you know, you know, Big Daddy Kane type rapper, okay. you know, methodical, you know, trying to formulate words. Mm-hmm. I ain't saying that I was the greatest at that, but that was my niche. So I, I was never at a point where I said, well, I, ain't, I can't rap over that. That, that beat is whack. That beat mm-hmm. is this. It was like, no, I, I, that beats that I could, I couldn't articulate. Mm. I couldn't because, and that was always the thing, man, can you do, 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 do pop, pop, pop. You were like, <laughs> nigga, make your own beat. And that's where it come from. Cause it's like, it, I used to give him a few things and he'll, he'll do them uh-huh. based on what I was trying to ask him to do. But it was, it was like, it made sense. Okay. If you really want it to be what you want, learn how to do, do this. It. Okay. So it was like, okay. So I that, started using it cause he had the ASR then and mm-hmm. I started playing with it. Then I was like, you know what? Because he, you know, his house is what it is. I can't just wait, roll out of bed and go use his. Okay. So I was like, I, I bought me an ASR Pro. Okay. The red one. And said, okay, I'm going I'm to I'm learn this. Yeah. So I would study him on what he was doing. Mm-hmm. The overlays, the underlays, the all that. It was like, produ- people think producing is just sample a beat, throw oh. some drum samples on it, and nah. It's no. like, people, if you understand, man, if you, people have no clue of what, and that's where, again, I ain't going to beat a dead horse, but that's where we are with production sometimes in these yeah. days. It's like, there's nothing dynamic about it. It's the same damn beat. Yeah. It's the same damn beat. And, and, and actually, these machines could do a whole lot more, but people just do the same. <laughs> They're not willing to learn or expand on it. Because, like, as you touch on Chud, one of the things, you know, like when I would go, and I'll pull a record out and like, here, sample this song here. And he would chop it up and I'm like. <laughs> yeah, I remember some of your songs. <laughs> and I'd be like, damn, you know? <laughs> and, and it was like magic to me because oh, yeah. this the guy who created some magic out of me just. And, and, <laughs> and that's my point right there. Cause even though I produce records, just like with me being a DJ, knowing how to DJ, I never called myself a DJ. I had a respect for DJs because Yes. DJs, and again, it goes to my dislike for some of them. And I always tell them, <laughs> if you if you got a regular job uh-huh. and you DJ once or twice a week, you're not a DJ. That's a right. hobby. Yeah. But that's no disrespect to them. But that, to the ones who get out of pocket, mm-hmm. you know, that's sometimes that's what I throw in their face. Yeah. But when you take a cat that that's what he does. I he mean, does. Yeah. that he uh, he's a producer. He's yeah. a DJ. It's like, dude, it's like the ext- intricacies that he put into it, the details that he put into it. Because, again, like me, I thought producing was, all oh, you want to sample, sample that, and boom, 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 and towel, and that's and it. it. No, it's much more. Man, right? the Trent, man, it's, <laughs> you, you have know. to learn tracking. You have to, you, it's so much <laughs> that you can't, it's sometimes you can't even explain it because mm-hmm. it's like you see it and you emulate it. And that's what I used to try to do. Mm-hmm. That's why I used to, uh, people are like, why you don't talk much? Because I'm learning. You learn to be quiet when you're trying to learn. Yes. Because if you're talking, you can't absorb nothing through the ears because you're clashing. But, you know, sitting here listening to you, it's like, you know, you many things. You that renaissance man. <laughs> you an educator, <laughs> DJ, producer, wisdom dropper, <laughs> you know, and much more, you know. And, and, and I think that's what we limit ourselves sometimes because we don't want to be called that. We just, I want to be the thug. Man. <laughs> I want to be the realist. But I mean, we got to embrace those things that we do in absolutely, you know, and, you know, and watch, you know, uh, a student also you can add to your title because we're watching and learning, you know, me knowing you and then like this later career is like now I understand where it came from. Well, something that some again, something that somebody imparted on me 
Mm -hmm. The greatest teacher is the greatest student. Mm -hmm. You never stop being a student, even if you become a master. There's somebody that mastered something before you. And if they still exist, you've not mastered anything, to be honest. Okay. It's just something that you are profound and great at. Yeah. But a a great master is always going to be a great student first. (laughs) Because that's that's what it's about, you know, being a student, you know, and, you know, don't rush to be that master, man, (laughs) because if you on top. (laughs) And and another thing, though, is that. As I'm I'm looking and listening is that, you know, you still got some ways, some where some places you want to go with this. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. And, you know, because like one of the things like when people did come to HBK, I'll show them how to work that board because I always tell them you never know when you're going to get that opportunity. Like, you know, somebody turned to me and like you want to do a radio show. And I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> you know, I know first nothing about pushing the button or talking and, you know, but we get our feet wet in these. Things. Absolutely. We make our mistakes and we learn. We make our mistakes and we learn, yes. we grow. Yes. You know, and I think that's one of the things that, you know, people f- don't embrace is that that failure sometimes. Or, you know, that, I, I don't know if you want to call it failure, but that that try that, you know, and people like, oh, I don't want to look bad. I don't want to. Well, failure is suggestive because it, it, it depends on how they take it because some mm-hmm. people take failure as being, oh, you fucked up. And forgive yeah. me for using that word, but, but no, yeah. it, it depends on what stems from it. Because if you take that F up and you turn it into something positive, if you yeah. learn from the whole thing is learning from it. Yeah. Because if you don't go out and stumble, you, I mean, you, you, I mean, at some point you're going to stumble. The thing is learning where not to or learning how not to <laughs> learning how to avoid obstacles. And that comes from failing sometimes. Maybe you don't know by kicking that rock that it's going to hurt and it's going to cause you to trip. So. The next time you encounter that rock, you play, you put your foot over it and you avoid it. Mm-hmm. So that's what, you know, failure sometimes just it, it, it's, it's made a mockery sometimes because it, failure is not what people think it is. Yeah. You know, it's a learning experience. If you take from that failure and you learn from it and you never venture toward that failure again. And that's what it's about. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So. We are in the era now where you are 80, 97, you're learning the, the craft of party promotion even better. Uh huh. Production, music production, MCing. <laughs> a lot. There's a lot going on. You know, and all this balancing a career, you know, a, a job, a yeah, I had a full you know, time, had a full time know, nine to five that required my time. So yeah, it's still like. So when Chill put out that CD, Chill Music All Stars. Yes, sir. How did that? What 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 feeling was that? Well, let me say this because it was it was dope, and it, it's not. I'm not saying it was dope because I was on it. Mm -hmm. It was dope because the material that was there, it was so diverse with a different, I mean, you had, I mean, off the top of my head, I think we had like eight different artists on there and all of them brought it. Everybody brought it on that CD. It was, it was killer. You know, of course my thinking was, man, they, everybody going to grab it. (laughs) It's going to blow up. It's going to do that. Uh I mean, it, it had its respect. But I think it was just too dope for at the time. Because mind you, this is going into that transition stage where radio didn't care about what you were talking about, mm-hmm. which is one of the craziest things in the world. <laughs> and when you know what I mean by radio, because yeah. I mean, we take it to HBK, we take it to KKC, they bumping it. Right. You take it to GCI. Well, the marketability is like, what are you talking about? We doing the same thing. <laughs> we not cut. We not going crazy cussing on the album. We not, you know, degrading people. And I think that. You know, I wasn't willing to because that wasn't me. And I don't think that was us as a crew. Mm -hmm. You know, we wasn't willing. And, and, you know, they use the term sell your soul. I think we were just being I think we were just being who we were as artists. So what what you got out of that out of that CD was just a bunch of genuine young people putting art to art to, you know, to CD and to cassette. And we had fun with it. So that's what I mean. So creating that, that was a, a time of 
Man, that was like, because I, I think I was in on everybody's recording. I mean, uh -huh. that was like the dopest time. I don't even know what the timeline <laughs> was. Just was sitting there just I was there like mesmerized, <laughs> like, man, he brought it. He brought, I mean, it was like, it was just so dope. Because, I mean, you know, with surrounding the Chill Music All-Stars and then everybody else, you know, you had the Alligator Squadron, right. the Guff. Yep. Um, a couple of other um, you had uh, IMF IMF you had uh, Juice was hanging around you had Vice Verse right you had I mean who else was around at that time you had again I mentioned Avo you had him and his crew they was around you had J Self right who was the uh, they were the uh, goodness well, I, 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 can't, I hate when I do that <laughs> I had they good they had dope name that was uh, that was my man Lou Cypher I cannot remember Lou Cypher and uh and, and, and J-Cell crew. It was a cold <laughs> name, but we had them. I mean, it was they, there were a lot of cats. We And, and we would show, the, the dope part, going back to 19, 19 South Michigan, Foxes and Hounds, one of the dopest shows was, it was a Planet Church show. Mm -hmm. uh, he had, IMF was on there. You had Concrete Mob, Alligator Squadron, they were on there. And you had, uh, you had us on there. We were doing our thing. And then you also had some of the Chicago people that would come through. So one of the dopest thing, and this was the first time now I knew Bam, who was uh, Canisto Teradon of the Gov. You know, we played baseball together, grew up in the gardens. But my very first time being introduced to the Gov was at a show we did where they came through and showed love, the whole crew. I mean, it's okay. like... It's like, you know, you hear the, the how the Wu-Tang Clan used to roll back in the day. It'd be 20, 30 of them show up to a show and boom. But they show up and it's all love and they coming to support. So, you know, they they doing their thing and in between they they doing they chant the gov, gov, gov. So Chud let them perform, which was one of like some of the dopest shit. Cause it was like, y'all come through, y'all pay. Now mind you, we charging for you to get in. They pay to get in and they perform and they they did their thing. That that was probably one of the dopest shows because if i'm not mistaken again we had concrete mob on there okay you had imf you had juice you had us and the gov came through and they did their thing and right. i mean you talking about hip-hop chicago hip-hop royalty in one space vice <laughs> vice and um vice he, he and um he and uh k-bar they performed too right so my man let me, let me, yeah let me i can't i can't forget them and i want to say i think i think Avo, I think they performed on a different show, but I think if I'm not mistaken, that was that. But they were in the house, so that that was the love part, especially South Side of Chicago cats with support. Mm -hmm. And we, when the Gov used to do stuff at the warehouse that was on 103rd, right off uh, Michigan Avenue, we would go up there and we support. That was okay. the one thing that we did. We supported when when Concrete Mob would do their things, they showcases in the gardens at the Children Building. Mm -hmm. We go up there and support that. That was the love part about what we was doing. It wasn't that, man, I demand to be on the show. I do this. Can If I come, can I perform? No, it was like, if you're on the show, you're on the show. You show up. If you do your thing, man, it was like, it was the love. And that was one of those respect things that, you know, the Gov show up. They didn't demand to be on the show. <laughs> but you rolled through and you got your crew. I think the Gov was like, maybe like 10 or somewhere in that fit, that, that Wu-Tang-ish number. Yeah. But you rolled through with like 20, 30 people. That's love right there. Because y'all paid to get into this show. Y'all supported this. So it was like, y'all a crew. So, man, you got to show the love back. Like you talk about Mastermind, one of the nicest MCs in man, Chicago. Again, Ike, he, we, I, we joke about because his father, Ike, that's the last name. It's okay. Ike. So Ike, again, one of those branch off, man. Ike, his father, Mr. Ike, mm -hmm. let me put some respect on that. Man, his father dopest hoagie sandwiches in the city of Chicago ever. I mean, okay. he was, they talk about the Philly hoagie. Hit the Ike hoagie. <laughs> I, man, and I've had the Ike, I've had mm -hmm. a Philly hoagie, of course, in my travels. But man, those old school Ike hoagies, that would, man, when I tell you those, boy. But that's his family. That's where, that's where he come from. So we okay. always joke because like the Concrete Mob cats, I remember him doing a show and it's like, we're going to bring up Ike's son, little Ike. And, you know, that's, yeah, but you know, <laughs> he went by a couple of, but yeah, Storm. Storm. Easily one of the dopest lyricists I ever, man, that, that cat, he had it. Yeah. He had it. I mean, it's like, 
He just had it. Like you say, cats yeah. that just had it. He right. has it. Let me say that. He because he still is amongst us. He has it. Yeah. You know, like you say, TMC has it you talk yeah. about big nasty has oh, yeah, it. you talk yeah. about you know doc has it and he's yeah. a still i mean yeah even, these cats are still wearing wearing a mic out bro that's why that whole <laughs> age thing that's why that thing has always bothered me because people say well rap the, even though the, the whole moniker for for the youth by the youth yeah that that's cool that was cool back then but right. you know you look at artists today you know madonna can release an album at 60 and still get respect you know, yeah, Mick Jagger, Mick them Jagger go yeah. tour. they can still release music at their age and still command respect. You have mm-hmm. a rapper, you know, release an album. Man, you too old for this. When do you become too old to spit? Right. You know, especially if you're still perfecting your game. Exactly. So that was always the thing. And they, like you say, they still pump. I, bro, I'm still listening to new music that they pumping out. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, it's like yeah. TMC, he has a whole series of Bro, things that he put out. Deadly, ridiculously dope. And Even you know, nasty. He's still and Doc, yeah, all of them. They big still nasty, yeah. If Doc Maninoff. And that we talk about that is that these brothers, like even with Big Nasty, that brother is cerebral. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even just the stuff he posts on social media is, is on a cerebral level. And I think that's what bothers people because the 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 MCs from our era, they make you think. Mm-hmm. The MCs and I, well, I'm gonna call them MCs, MCs. because that's what they are. The, I'm saying from today because when you look at, and, and that's the whole thing. We could even talk about that. What the whole thing about hip hop is? Hip hop is still what it is. Rap is the voice of hip hop. So regardless of how you doing it, it's still the voice. Does mm-hmm. it make it hip hop? That's why when people would, it's not hip hop. It, it, it's hip hop. It's rap. It's rap. You know. And so yeah, it, yeah. It's, so it's like that that whole debate. But it's like I think that's what bothers people because MC. I want to be tested when like when big when people <laughs> yeah. spit stuff and it make you think like yeah, damn yeah. This, he was very creative. Yeah. The creativeness mm-hmm. is gone from rap now. Yeah, because you know before you know people come with the metaphors, the symbols, yeah. or the whole scenarios they would. You know, <laughs> like my guy said, I'll push the fright through your opticals, you right. know, and, 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 and stuff like that. We was, we was seeking out the most <laughs> vivid presentation yes. we could give you. Yes. You know, you know, my presence was going to take up this whole area with my words. Exactly. <laughs> and that's, that's the part that's missing because. You know, and, and again, it's no knock to what we call the new music because mm-hmm. a lot of the new music that mm-hmm. I do listen to, it's a lot of MC, even what they deem as, as quote unquote garbage rap. Mm-hmm. Like there are songs that a Chief Keef may put out that I, 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 I vibe with because for one, it's the beat and what's going on with it. Yeah. And then even with other artists, even some of the other younger artists, like, I mean, some of the some of the Chicago cats like mm-hmm. G Herbal, he got he got like songs that I right. that I kind of vibe with. It's like doing what I do now. I I have an appreciation for music because I see it all, mm-hmm. and some of it gets a bad rap. But mm-hmm. it's even some of the some of our generation MCs. Mm-hmm. I've never really cared for some of their whole albums. It's right. like some of their music. So right. when you look at that, and when you when you sit back and you look at the optics of it. It's like, I just like what I like. I don't mm-hmm. have to like everything you do. I don't like it. it you can take my favorite uh, actor. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's a, like all the Denzel movies. I don't like all the Denzel right. movies. So why should I be, why should I have to be handcuffed <laughs> to liking everything that somebody that I appreciate and like does? Because everything my wife cooks, I, ain't, I mean, it may not be good. I hope hey. she don't hit it, but I'm just saying. And I'm using you know, that as an example. If she puts you out for a night, you know you can sleep <laughs> on the couch over here. <laughs> Stacy got you. <laughs> but man, it's like that's why I I get it about why people dislike today's artists. It's not their fault. It's not like they going into these record labels and going into these radio stations and saying we going to do this for y'all. What they understood is what the expectations were mm-hmm. and they gravitated and they adapted to it. So this is what radio likes. If radio likes this, I can get more streams or however they, you know, pushing their music. Mm-hmm. Then that's what I'm going to do. And that's what they adapted and started doing. I'm going to tell you something about going back to the sonically thing. Stevie Wonder himself, uh, he tracks and tracks multi-tracks. Mm-hmm. And I think he's at like, 
120 tracks Ooh. when he performs live. 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 120 so, some tricks. So you have to have expansion kicks when you when his guys are mixing. Here's the thing. Have Steve, you seen them guys mix? Oh, absolutely. One okay. of my brothers, my, Danny Leak, God rest his soul, was his Tell front of house about engineer. That. Tell us about that. And Bill Barnett was one of his uh, monitor engineers. He has two monitor engineers, one who does ears and one that mixes for the band. Okay. And then you had Danny Leak in front of the house. So you you talking about 120 something plus tracks. So it's okay. like this is full production with the orchestra, everything. It's like it doesn't get any better than that as a as an audio engineer. It it doesn't get any better than that. Just that being able to put that together, mm-hmm. it's like it's one of the dopest things ever that you could that you could ever that you could ever witness. It's like it's just super dope. So this is not nobody rolling in the day of setting this up and no, like we're going. This is all like, now. I, I'll be honest with you. There is some track on there because of course you're not rolling in. No, I'm just 100. saying this is this is a well. Yes, this is all him. His band, his engineers, his background vocal, and him playing live. Mm-hmm. It's like it's man, it, it's bro. <laughs> That's why you don't see him like now. It call, and I won't put the number out there, but it's a very high number to have him come out and perform for you now because of all this. That because goes of everything goes into it, and because his appreciation, because of what he means to the music world, he's not gonna come out and shortchange you. Okay, so this because you know like they show this thing on YouTube when Prince came out. When he is performing and Prips plugs in and mm-hmm. plug in his guitar and they right well that's a channel that they but for I'm, one thing you'll know that prince is coming so they'll have a, a channel dedicated to a guitar channel that's eq to a guitar so you go out there you do your thing and, and bam but I'm, what i'm trying to get at is that these sound engineers are gods absolutely <laughs> they are it's Sound engineers are some of the most underappreciated people because when you and now the thing is we have the saying when you do a good job nobody mentions you. Mm-hmm. That's how you want it. You don't want somebody to leave. Man, that sounded like shit. This sounded <laughs> like that. And you know some some sound engineers they and you know it's a it's a it's a job where people you know they have a high how how, how can you say it? Um, the word slips my mind. Oh my goodness! I need to slow that. No, I'm gonna have another drink. But the uh, pride. Sound engineers are very prideful because for sound engineers, they, we don't pass out cards. Mm-hmm. Our work is how we get referred or how we generate, you know, more work. So some, but some engineers they go way above and beyond what they need to do because mm-hmm. what we hear, and you go back to the thing about sonically hearing things. A sound engine, you'll go crazy because you hear things. It's like when we started this, mm-hmm. I noticed things. You can yeah. hear things and it irritates you because it's like the general public or the person that's sitting in, you know, row 11, seat A is not hearing what you hear, but it irritates you. But you want it to be perfect. We want things to be as perfect as possible because anytime there's an anomaly and somebody says, well, it's too loud. It's too this. This is that and other. It's like that irritates us. So it's like we try to have, we try to match things for what they are for the environment. So, And me and Stacey talks about this all the time is that, you know, people who in a craft, they know when something is off, when something <laughs> is not hidden. You know what I mean? And, 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 that's, and people don't realize when they go to these shows is that the sound man is the God. Not the artist might, you know, bro. That's why it's difficult for us to go to be civilians and go to concerts that we're not associated with. It's like this is all. I hear the highs, like the mids. We hear things differently because we hear it from a quote unquote want to be perfection standpoint yeah. versus now. There's some engineers out there that just don't give a shit. I, right. I'm just gonna be real. Yeah. They either don't. They either don't give a shit or they don't know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it, it's reflective of what the outcome is mm-hmm. on, on sound. Yeah. But I mean, you can't, you can't, I mean, something being too loud, something not being loud enough is very suggestive because it just depends it's on a, where you yeah. are. It depends on how you hear things because my hear, everybody's hearing is the same. Yeah. Yes. So what may sound loud to you is not loud enough to the next person. Then it depends on where you are in the arena. Right. If you're close to the, the PA, unfortunately, those high price tickets put you closer to the PA. So and it's going getting, to it's gonna be louder to you. Yeah. And the further further away you get it, if it's not covered a- accurately, 
you can hit what we call room noise, where it's just sound bouncing off the walls, bouncing off the floor, <laughs> bouncing off something. You know, an adequately covered room, you know, to a certain degree, you hear everything in a range of maybe 85% of everybody hearing the same thing. Man, I think that's a whole nother podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah because, man. you know, as consumers, we go into the places and we think that we're going to hear it like it's on the CD. No. And, and a lot of people don't take it into account like, Ravinia is outside right. venue, and that has a whole different sound matters, problem. Yeah. yeah, you know, and and that's why, like, when I do my podcast, you know, and I listen to other people podcasts, I report my record my podcast flat. Yeah, with no EQ, exactly. no nothing, and this, and then go back in. You can you do post production. Yep, the noise suppression and this and that, and 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 that. But I listen to other people podcasts, and I'd be like. Next, <laughs> yeah, because of the sound. Yeah, it, it, sound means everything. Because if it irritates you, you're not gonna want to sit there and listen right. to something that irritates you. Because you will look at a bad video with good sound, with dope sound. Yeah. You will look at it, long as, it, but you won't look at a dope video with bad sound, right? Because it's very <laughs> irritating. So it's like, nah, let me let me get away from that. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's I mean, that that's one that's one part of it. You know, being an audio engineer, the pride that goes into it and wanting to make sure that everything is right. But there there are a lot of dynamics that make it very hard for you to put. Yeah, the artist for one. And, you know, a lot of people in my in my craft, the everybody wants to run the front of what we call front of house. That's the front of house mix position where the everybody hears. That's the the concert venue. That's where everybody hears. Mm hmm. The monitor engineer to me is the most important because that's what the artist Here. is hearing. If the artist isn't happy, it's mm-hmm. very reflective. It could sound beautiful in the house, mm-hmm. but if the artist is irritated, not happy, he translates that on the microphone. And I'm sure you've seen some videos <laughs> where, hey man, get this sound right. And you're like, wait, mm-hmm. it sounds good out here. Right. But that's the monitor engineer making it difficult for the artist to be happy. So the monitor engineer is the most important engineer in that room. But everybody likes to run out the front of house thinking that that's the most important. No, it's the monitor engineer. Because if the monitor, if the artist isn't hearing things right, Mm -hmm. if it's jacked up for him, man, that kills the whole vibe. There's a video. And if you, I pull something up on YouTube for you, I might work and I won't mention the artist. Mm-hmm. but they're on stage doing a thing and the sound wasn't right. So mm-hmm. on the video, you see me up there with a frown on my face, orchestrating, Hey, get this right. You know, do that mm-hmm. stuff. Right. So that's what I do now as a production manager. Okay. So that that's important though, because you always hear the artists like, man, my mic ain't right. Yeah. You know, da, da, da. I can't hear myself. Uh, yeah. And slam the mic. <laughs> and it's like in front at the, in the house, it's like, what are you talking about? We hear you. Yeah. Like if you've ever seen an artist, can y'all hear me out there? Mm-hmm. And he'd be like, yeah, well, I can't hear up here. And then that's a whole different problem. One artist, KRS-One, he does that a lot. Because KRS-One, now two, two artists in particular, KRS-One and Anita <laughs> Baker, they're sound engineers. So they understand the dynamics mm-hmm. of audio. So when things aren't right on stage, uh-huh. it ain't good for you. Right. So, so they mention things and, you know, they call out things <laughs> and they're able to call out frequencies and call out mm-hmm. things that lay people be like, what is he talking about? Uh, 2K. What is he talking about? 8,800. And, you know, it's like, <laughs> no, he's calling frequencies that are yeah. irritating him or he's saying things. And, you know, it, it, that's why it's, it's better to get things right and not, you know, fall into that pride thing and be like, well, I'm, I'm the, like I was one show. <laughs> I can I can run through them. one show uh-huh. where modern modern engineer. On a recording, he's a he's a Grammy award. And that, get credit to him. He's a Grammy award audio engineer, mm-hmm. but he's fucking up. <laughs> so the artist translates that to, "Hey man, blah blah blah." This and he, man, I'm a motherfucking I'm a Grammy award winner. Well, that don't matter now. You here working like everybody else. So throw the pride out, get the shit right, mm-hmm. and make everybody else happy. So those are yeah. So let's take it back because yeah. you just touched on something. Mm-hmm. From you just starting in a listening to the music to to your point now, that ego, man, that what? ego. But I mean, like I've I've known you over the years, and your ego has never been bigger than a room, as they say. You know, that's because God rest her soul. My mom, even if she didn't tell me to be mindful, to be humble, 
I've been that way because I follow suit with what she was okay. and how she was. Mm-hmm. You know, you got a lot of people out there that, and, and I mean, I'm not, I'm not a superstar, but I can claim accolades. I've mm-hmm. been out there and I've done great things with great people, mm-hmm. superstars, but I'm going to remain humble because those people don't have to call you back out. Yeah. That's true. That work can go away and you could be, you know, there are many ways that you can humble people. Mm -hmm. The best way is to be humble yourself and not have someone humble you or put you in your place. So I've always, I'm not going to say always, but for the most part, I I sit back and I'm not, I don't want to be that loudest voice in Mm -hmm. the room because that's typically the weakest person in the room. That loud voice it's like a dog barking, a, a lion roaring. They don't want you. I mean, they could be powerful, but at mm-hmm. the same time, they don't want you by you mm-hmm. because they don't know how you can test them. Yeah. Rattlesnake will start rattling because he don't know if you are if you are elephant or if you're a mouse. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, don't want you around me because I don't want to be tested. And that's how some people are. Mm-hmm. They blow up and get loud and all this. Man, you don't know me. <laughs> yeah, I just be humble. Thank yeah. God for the work go out there and do my thing man because that's what a lot of people they see that more than anything yeah when you do a good job when you're thankful when you're humble about it man they they appreciate it because they're they're more assholes than grains (laughs) of sand out there so (laughs) (laughs) because i like i say you know over the years i know you and this in this new career field you know and these artists you know it could get to that point you know and a lot of uh, young people don't know how to, even the older people don't know how to handle these situations, right. you know, and it's always that ego plays into it. Like, you know, I learned over the years, like, you know, you got to let the ego, you know, don't let the ego go get, you know, out there. Right. Don't let it, you know, because, you know, that's when you had those problems. Absolutely. People, you know? I say that. No, I, I attribute that to those situations yeah. where what you see and what 90 percent, 95 percent of the people see is what they should see. Mm-hmm. Because that 5 percent of the shit that you do that you shouldn't be doing. Mm-hmm. But God says, OK, calm your ass down. Mm-hmm. That's why it, it, it's easier and it's better for you to say to help to correct yourself when you see something building up. Mm-hmm. You don't want to try if, if you have an opportunity to cross Lake Michigan while it's froze mm-hmm. versus when it's not frozen, mm-hmm. which path are you gonna choose? Well take the frozen path. Okay. Because shit, that, that <laughs> swim is a motherfucker. So right. and that's the whole thing about it. It's easier to be humble and accept things. Now it, it ain't nobody's asking anybody to be a punk. Right. Even that's one of those terms. You, know, you ain't no punk. Mm-hmm. Nobody think you're a punk. You just have to stand on yours and understand that line, mm-hmm. they stay over there. You stay over here and you manage what you're supposed to. Now, when Mm -hmm. things get out of order, that's a whole different thing. But if you manage and you do things the way that they're supposed to, typically they won't get out of order. So, I mean, to say what you're saying, because I'm that way because I was taught to be that way. Okay. And that's what I want to. That's the point I'm trying to stress is that that knowledge that has been imparted, that wisdom. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The entertainment world, and you've been in it longer than I have. I'm going to say that, you know, going back to the to the radio mm-hmm. days. There are a lot of weirdos in this business. Mm-hmm. So you got to find that balance. You got to find where you are so it won't affect you. Because if you, if, uh, case an example, if I know that you throw shit out your window mm-hmm. at 3 p.m. <laughs> every Wednesday. Mm-hmm. I'm going to avoid walking under your window mm-hmm. at 2.50 <laughs> to 4 o'clock on Wednesdays. Okay. Because if that's what you do, I know to avoid that. Yes. Or if it anybody for that matter. Mm-hmm. And that's what you, you learn people's tendencies. And that's, mm-hmm. where you, that's where you find that balance. That's where that yin and yang comes from. Wisdom. We touch bases on yeah. it. That's where when you learn to not, to not, be in a situation, you know how to avoid the situation. And that's a perfect example. You don't challenge it. You don't say, okay, it's 350. I'm going to stand under this motherfucker's window. I'm going to test him to see if he's going to do it. If you know that that's what that person does, can you really get mad at them? No. And that's my thing. Yeah. Even though it could be the most mm-hmm. wrong, nasty thing mm-hmm. on the planet, you avoid the situation exactly. when you have control of You have control to avoid that situation. Yeah. And then if you don't want to avoid it, you... You're going to get shit. 
Well, you're you going to have to go into that conflict mode. Right. Well, and, and that's avoidable. That's avoidable. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, we're taught to run to the conflict. You know, run into the fire. Right. You know, and then sometimes you don't you could run around the fire Man. And, and avoid all the <laughs> one of the biggest issues that we front that we that we face, I should say. Yeah. Is people that want the smoke. How they say you want the smoke. Shannon Sharp a couple of weeks ago. You want the smoke. I don't want the smoke. You don't need to you don't have to have you don't have to have the smoke in your life. Right. So we could do this hip hop thing, this music thing without the smoke. And that's the part of it, because when and going back to the hip hop thing, the be- most one of the greatest things in hip hop was that and, and hip hop, if people don't know. Two of the catalysts, Cool Hurt and African Bob and African Bad Bob. Mm-hmm. That was a battle. Mm-hmm. It didn't it didn't progress with motherfucker. You this MF you yeah. that 80s hip hop. Mm-hmm. And one of the and, and there were many of them, but mm-hmm. the LL Cool J and <laughs> Kumo D thing. Yeah. They weren't saying F you. You couldn't pull up at a party. I'm going to mm-hmm. shoot you and all that. No. And he, KRS-One and uh, MC Shan. <laughs> right. You know, that was, it was all about, well, I'm not going to say what it was all about, but it was, it was about the music. It was mm-hmm. about where it started from or I'm lyrically better I'm, than you or if I'm this or I'm that. I'm going to one-up you. I'm going to one-up you. It wasn't about, man, you show up on, on <laughs> this block and you're going to get it or mm-hmm. you come over here. It, it was about the skill. Yeah. It was about yeah. who was better, who wasn't, and you turned out music that even, I mean, you could even look at, even though it got supposedly personal, but I think it was orchestrated, mm-hmm. the Jay-Z Nas beef. Right. You know, when, you know, allegedly some of the personal stuff about baby mamas mm-hmm. got into that stuff, but it was still, you know, rap versus rapper. Mm-hmm. It wasn't murderer versus murderer <laughs> right. on the street. And that's where the essence left because that's what hip hop was about. Mm-hmm. Crews battling. Mm-hmm. Breakers battling, mm-hmm. DJs battling, taggers battling, mm-hmm. MCs battling. That's hip hop. Yeah, that's hip hop. Everybody yeah. want to put all, insert all this <laughs> other stuff. Hip hop is based on battling. Right. So now I got to bring in the street organizations and right, and I have my bag. I got to have my shooter. Exactly. It's like where did this come from? When <laughs> the whole movement was about taking that street element out of it, right. coming to a consensus. <laughs> And a neutral ground and doing this thing and seeing, you know, who was better. Right, because those street cats had talent. Yeah. And it was like, okay, let me showcase my talent. Let me right. showcase what I'm doing, what I put together. Right. That's why when he, and I, I've never considered myself a hip hop head. Mm-hmm. You know, that the whole backpack, north side <laughs> movement, all that. I've never considered myself that. I just, I, I just love, I love the music. Yeah. But when people say, well, hip hop is dead, how, how is a culture dead? Mm. Whether you want to accept now, we we I think the consistency is we don't really care <laughs> about the rappers of today. Mm-hmm. But that's still an element of hip hop. That's an element. You know, like I say, you know, it's an element and some of them are creative. Right. I just wish that. But here's the who- thing. <laughs> here's the thing. Whether they creative or not, they're still hip hop or essence of hip hop or rap music right. that we can create. See, com- people want to look at commercialism, commercial television, commercial mm-hmm. radio and say, well, that's what hip hop is right now. No, hip hop is still on somebody's corner block. It's still at one of these hole in the wall joints, mm-hmm. wherever you go. It's in your bedroom. It's wherever you are. It's still on. It's in your it's in your your iPod. It's in your radio. <laughs> it's not what you see or hear on the radio or what you see on TV. That's not that's not the only representation of it. So just like there was bad, and I, I, I'm mm-hmm. sorry, there, just like there was bad, horrible hip hop back in the mm-hmm. 80s, this is just more bad hip hop now. <laughs> There's still good rap music out there. It's just that people want to focus on the commercial side of it. And it's like, if you don't like it, don't listen. I mm-hmm. couldn't tell you, and I'm not going to call out any radio station, but I don't listen to commercial radio. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just don't. I don't because it's not what I want to listen to because it's so much of what I don't like Mm -hmm. I find what I do like and I listen to that there's still avenues where you can find what you want (laughs) exactly in this day and age the technology you type in what you want you go to what you want and that's the crazy part the technology age y'all still zero in on commercial Mm -mm. television and radio 
to fulfill your needs when you have so many avenues to fulfill it. And it's like, come on, don't complain about it. Don't be if you're not the if you're not the uh, if you're not the solution, you're definitely the problem. Yeah, you don't have to be the problem. Definitely. We can let these young people have their music because you got to remember if 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 GCI and I'm gonna call a name if GCI or Power 92 or any of these uh, mm-hmm. Kiss 95 or whatever the call names are, if they feel that that's what their demographic wants to listen to, and there's no pushback to say that we don't want to hear that, what you think they're gonna do? They're gonna play mm-hmm. what commercial radio and TV wants to to back and say, hey, that's the demographic. This is what we're trying to push. You don't have to co-sign it. You don't have to agree with it. You don't have to listen to it. Exactly. And and that's the beauty. Like I say, that's the beauty of this day and age is that you can even go and make your own. Man, again, we, we go back to our, <laughs> our brothers who are in their they late 40s and 50s still cranking out very good music that we appreciate and listen to. And it goes back to those early DJs that we discovered in our life who found records that spoke to us. Man. Even though we don't know the titles of them. <laughs> Look, that's why I say I, I will embrace the 80s into the day I die. And I understand now, like when I was, when we were kids in the 80s, why that infinity to the, the affinity to the uh, 80s, I mean, to the 60s for those who were yeah. back then was there. It was like, that it was just a whole groove and a vibe that you can't describe. It was like the '60s when you look at it, you look at the optics and you see it. Mm-hmm. The fashion, you know, the culture itself. It was like, bam! That's the '60s to our parents mm-hmm. or the '50s or you know to our, some of our older brothers. It was like the '80s for us because that was our coming of age time because yeah. of what we had. You look at what came about. We go back to hip hop. You know, late seventies, early eighties, and how how it manifested house music, how it manifested. You know, even fashion. You look at, I mean, eighties was probably the worst fashion era of all time. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that. You didn't but like you, the Zodiac book, <laughs> man. But the crazy part, you, you, I didn't. But you look, you look at it, and you look at it now, and how it how it spawned fashion these days how they take away how these young and they creative as as non-creative and i don't even know if that's a real word as uncreative as they are in terms of some of things like music mm-hmm. the other things that they are creative with with fashion with art you know with with home decor, decor and all that mm-hmm. other stuff it's like why did music not translate that way you know what uh, I, I i i think what it is is that even with the music, the technology, and how these young people are using it, it's creative, but they need that soul in it. It's missing that soul, and some of it is missing the soul. It's, it's not falling in rhythm. Got too easy. It got too easy, so it's now like I could roll out of bed and hit record, right. roll back in bed, and go to sleep, and jump up, and I got, look at my likes. Mm-hmm. You know, and the thing is that I think that's what's missing is that like that hard work, that work ethic, that is, part, is, that work ethic is in there because you in the sixties, seven, you had to put in that choreography yep. footwork, you know, working on your show and this and that. You you could you know some of those young cats roll into those stadiums. You could tell that they didn't practice. No, I just did a show. <laughs> I, I ain't gonna even mention it. <laughs> I to still mean, have to work for these people. So right, but I just saying <laughs> you you've seen some people get on that stage and had no practice. They just do it. Yeah, there's there's nothing like I, I've set in for certain artists on rehearsals. They are rehearsed for you know anywhere from two to six weeks on crafting mm-hmm. their show because everything is about the show. Mm-hmm. You have artists now, okay, I, I'll book a, a 15 city tour. Let's just go out and do it. Mm-hmm. We don't, you know, however we do it, we just gonna do it. And that's the difference between artists now because even rappers back then, you know, even though it was, it was DJ, play music and mm-hmm. a microphone and you rap, they still had some choreography to mm-hmm. it. They still had some organization to it. They didn't just decide that they gonna accept these tour dates or these show dates and go out there and do it. <laughs> 
there was still some kind of organization that went into it. <laughs> now, because it's so because these kids are not they it's so easy to and it's crazy. It's, it's, it's easy to impress them. Then you, you see a musician doing a musician, a musician, a magician doing something where we were captivated by that. Like, how did he do that? Mm -hmm. They don't even care. They don't care about the prestige that goes with it the, or the, the end of the trick. They, they not, you know, they're not impressed with that stuff. It's just go out and sing because for one. They make it easy for the artists because now the artists go out there and they're going to sing their whole damn song. So the artists, all they do is they stick the microphone out while DJ playing the mm -hmm. music. So they don't have to work for what they're doing. Go from the hotel to the stage to the hotel. No, no. They go from the hotel to the dressing room and they drink the five bottles of Crown that's in there that the promoter got them. And then they go on the stage, half drunk do a half performance and then they go back to the hotel back to the green room back to the hotel and go to the next city it's too easy for them you know and you know you know what we're going on a happy note oh yeah let's do that let's do that <laughs> anyway so so what would you leave these people with as far as you know you're getting into this business you want to be on stage you're doing a road show what do they need to do it depends on where they at in their career. So let, let's say that they've done, they put the sweat equity in and they've done some recording, they've mm -hmm. done some local shows, and now they're, you speaking in terms of doing some touring or some mm -hmm. bigger. One thing is, even before they hit the road, is understand the craft and understand the crafts that touch them. Mm -hmm. If you are a performing artist, singer, rapper, whatever you are, Understand the dynamics that go along with what your craft is. And I touch mm -hmm. bases with Kara's one and Anita Baker. Anita Baker is is an audio engineer. Mm -hmm. She can sit behind a mixing console. She can mix. She can okay. EQ. She's that. Learn the crafts that touch you the most. Learn how to be an engineer. So when you're on stage and you hear feedback, a, a microphone cycling through a monitor, you can call out 4K. You can call out 2K. You can call out the frequencies that keep feeding back. You understand how to actually handle a microphone and not cuff the damn crown of the microphone. Because one of the things I always tell people is go to the studio. And when you're recording that song, grab the mic like you grab it on stage, cuff mm -hmm. it and record it and see how trash that sounds. That's what the audience hears. Mm -hmm. And they make it harder for the engineer to EQ that stuff out. So when you go, here's an example. So, yeah, you come in there. I'm the <laughs> yeah. Go to the studio and record like that. See, people don't understand that. So learn the craft and learn the things that touch you and you'll have a greater appreciation for it. So it's like a lot of cats that have that. I'll I give you one example. Rob Van Winkle, a.k.a. Vanilla Ice. He's mm -hmm. another cat. He's another engineer. OK. And I did a show with him. A co was it? It was pre-COVID, I believe. But it was mm -hmm. was it pre-COVID? I think it was pre-COVID, but he's a guy, he's, he, and I use the word weird because in his monitors, he likes to hear things the way he likes to hear. Mm -hmm. The monitor engineer was like, well, that doesn't make sense. Well, if he's telling you to roll out two, these are frequencies, 200, 160. If he's telling you to roll these things out and that's how he wants to hear it, that's how he wants to hear it. It doesn't, mm -hmm. if it doesn't have to make sense to us. Okay. If he's rolling out frequencies versus boosting frequencies. But that's a person who understands what he wants to hear. And that's why I say artists now, if you understand the dynamics about production, hmm. all that angry shit that they get into, all that dumb shit, all of that unappreciative shit that they do, it lessens itself. So when you run up and you work for artists that understand, mm -hmm. it makes it a whole lot easier because they already understand what's going on. You already doing a magic trick by doing what you're doing because people think that you roll into these arenas or roll into these um, theaters. They don't sound alike. So there are mm -hmm. things that you have to do because some of them can be baffled. Some of them have noise treatment. Some of them, they're just different. All of these theaters, all of these arenas are different. So when you roll into them, it's not just turn on and play. <laughs> they are things that you, people don't understand. Some engineers, they'll spend an hour, hour and a half tweaking, you know, audio just to make sure it's right. Yeah. So what I say, what I'm trying to impart on uh, artists that are getting into the game or been in the game, you, you can be in the game for 20 years. Mm -hmm understand the dynamics of production mm. and that'll help you and that'll you know take away some of that angry shit that goes on between <laughs> artists and, and engineers and producers sometimes 
Because, it, it, I mean, sometimes it could get crazy. And sometimes, you know, when they understand and they know what's going on, it just makes it that much easier. Mm-hmm. That's why a lot of art, the smart artists, they hire their own, they own engineers, front of house engineer, monitor engineer. They have their own production people to make sure that the shit is right before they even get to the arena. Some okay. of them, it, it's, so, it's so tight for some crews that the artists don't even show up mm. because they people take care of that. Now, there are a lot of artists that roll that don't. They make a whole lot of fucking money. They make more money than some of the artists that, you know, mm-hmm. that, that preceded them. Yet they're cheap as fuck. <laughs> they don't care because they say, well, I don't need that. They're going to have people that take care of that. But then they be the motherfuckers complaining. It's like, stop it. Just get hire a staff. The right. same way any conventional business hires a staff, mm-hmm. hire a staff. You're, you're a brand because, right. you know, people, the one thing they understand, I know we getting close to rapping, is that your brand, it's a, like a lot of them, I think, they, they have these short, short bursts where they, they just in it for however long they think they're going to be in it because mm-hmm. a lot of them don't look at sustainability. And some of them right. don't have that sustainability. But the smart artists that have the sustainability, they follow that format. They have people, they have support people that take care and make sure that what they're doing is the right shit. Mm-hmm. Because once you lose your audience, that's it. I don't care how hot that damn song was supposed mm-hmm. to be. Once you lose their audience, they'll turn their back on your ass. Yeah. Because they look, they, they looking for the next high. Right, and they always like, well, last time I went to go see him, the three times in a row I went to go see him, he sounded horrible. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't invest in your craft yeah because they are people who pay their money they, you got they got to give you a short leash mm-hmm. I, again i did a show pre what was it uh december 17th just before christmas in minneapolis and you know dealing with the building uh they mentioned at the headline and i won't mention them that yeah he he shows up late he does this he does that and it's like i i've seen that with artists and it's like i never understood that because mm. the people who pay they hard working money or they have money you know show up for them yeah. give them a good show and tell them where you're gonna be next and maybe mm-hmm. they because that that's the old thing mm-hmm. the the old rock groups where people Man. would follow the grateful dead they'll Man. follow <laughs> follow you from city to city yeah <laughs> you know you, the Rolling Stones they follow you from city to city they yeah. do those European trips where they follow you city to mm-hmm. city yeah, rappers have some of that but not a whole lot of it because they so shitty it's like come on just honor the craft respect yeah. your craft more so and more importantly respect the people who mm-hmm. pay and care about you care mm-hmm. to come see you Yes, but that whole dynamic has changed. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's man. It, it's a it's a lovely <laughs> feel. It's it's a beautiful feel. I love what I do for a living, man. I absolutely do. That's 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 what's up, and that's that's the blessing. Yeah, absolutely, you know. And we're gonna end it there, real. We're gonna end it there for now. So remember, respect the audience, and respect the sound, man. Yes, indeed. <laughs> or and I I piggyback on it. Just respect everybody. Yeah, man. respect everybody. Respect everybody in that building. Security, ushers, the person yeah. who's selling you that ten dollar beer. Yeah. That twenty dollar uh, Long Island iced tea. <laughs> respect all those people, man. Hey, it's been a blessing, man. I greatly appreciate yes, it. Yes, indeed. This was years in the making. Yeah. So you know. It is what it is. Man, and I love what it is. (laughs) Love, baby. Peace.